Hello guys, today we are going to discuss about the topic Birch Algorithm. So what is the full form of the Birch Algorithm? Balanced Iterative Reducing and Clustering Using Hierarchies. So this is one method in the Hierarchical Clustering Algorithm and it is one of the scalable clustering method and uh, uh, this Birch Algorithm it is designed for the very large data sets only. Uh, each and every time we need only one scan of the data is necessary here and it is completely based upon the clustering features it is completely based upon the clustering features or cluster tree here and this cluster feature is a height balance tree which will store the clustering features for a hierarchical clustering so cluster of the data points is represented by the triple of the numbers how the triple of the numbers can be represented like n ls comma ss so what is that n here triple means three points will be there n will gives you the total number of items in the subcluster and what is the ls here ls will gives you the linear sum of points linear with a linear sum of points and ss will gives you the sum of the square root of the points ss will gives you the sum of the square root of the points which will gives you the triple of the numbers next what is the cluster feature tree structure how the cluster feature tree structure can be represented means a cluster feature tree it is a height balance tree where it will stores all the clustering features in that particular tree all the clustering features will be there for the hierarchical cluster so again for a tree means definitely we know that we are having the root node will be there non leaf nodes will be there and leaf nodes will be there so here in a non leaf node in a tree structure it will have some descendants on the children node will be there and in the non leaf nodes it will store the sum of all the cluster features of their children which will summarizes the clustering information about their children here and this cluster feature has uh, two parameters are there one is the b and one is the t what is this b means uh, b will gives you about the branching factor and t will gives you the threshold value t so what is this branching factor branching factor which will specify the maximum number of children per non leaf node branching factor will specify the maximum number of children per the non leaf node how many number of children should be there for a particular root node it will specify the branching factor and what is meant by the threshold parameter threshold parameter will specify what is the maximum diameter of the subcluster stored at the leaf nodes of your tree threshold parameter will always specify the what is the maximum diameter of the subclusters which can be stored at the leaf nodes of a tree here and uh, these two parameters uh, completely your cluster feature tree it is completely based upon these two parameters only that is the branching factor b and a threshold parameter t next uh, this is the example of your uh, cluster feature tree here this is my root node where i am having this is one cluster feature this is the another cluster feature like that and so on i am having the b number of cluster features are there and if you see whatever the next level will be there that next level i am having the non leaf nodes are there and for these non leaf nodes i am having again the leaf nodes are there where in this leaf nodes i am having the cluster features are there so this is my cluster feature 1 2 3 and the summation of all these cluster features will be stored here and this is the another leaf node and this is the another leaf node this is the entire cluster feature tree structure here so as if we will do for the binary trees and the b plus trees so the same order will be followed for this cluster feature tree also and uh, this is the algorithm for the beach uh, clustering algorithm first one is loading the complete uh, data into the memory here and second step is initialize the cluster feature tree here that means we have to construct first the smaller cluster feature tree and then we have to perform in the third phase we have to perform the global clustering global clustering can be done by using the k-means algorithm or k-meloids algorithm and in the fourth feature i am going to do the cluster refining that means uh, entirely if any other uh, irrelevant uh, points are there i will remove those irrelevant points and the cluster refining will be there, done here to get the very good clusters here so let us uh, see with an example here so again a few terminologies are there in this bitch parameter that is if we take the n d dimensional data points are the points in a cluster we will define the centroid x naught this is the equation of the centroid x naught and this is the radius if you want to calculate the radius here for a given circle we have to calculate the radius and this is the equation for the diameter for the clusters and how the cluster feature can be represented means uh, this is the, the cf is equal to triple n points that is the n ls comma ss three points will be there in the cluster feature 
and how to calculate the cluster feature for a given set of points here suppose if i am having c1 uh, these points uh, how to calculate the c1 points here so here uh, i will take what is the first value n value is my first value in the cluster feature uh, what is my n value here how many points are there 1 2 3 4 5 points are there so i will take my n value as 5 and the next one is the ls ls will gives you the linear sum of data points here so what is the linear sum of data points see this is the equation 9 plus 12 plus 10 plus 8 plus 11 which will gives you 50 this is my linear sum of points and what about the ss here ss will gives you the sum of square root of the data points so that is the 9 square plus 12 square plus 10 square plus 8 square plus 11 square which will gives you the 5 so if the points are given like this we can calculate the cluster feature like this suppose if i am having the 2d objects are there so i am having the just like uh, x y coordinates i am having the points then how to find out the cluster feature here how to find out the cluster feature so here how many points are there one two three points are there so my n value will be three here then now uh, what about the cluster ls value ls value which will gives you the we have to do the summation of all the x coordinates and all the y coordinates so here this is my ls value this is my ls value that is one plus two plus three comma 1 plus 1 plus 2 which will gives you the 6 comma 4 this is my ls value then what about the ss value here ss value will gives you the square root of all these x and the y points here so 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square comma 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square which will gives you the values like 14 comma 6 and this is my 14 comma 6 that means we can calculate the cluster feature for the is given linear set of data points or i can calculate based upon these uh, x and y coordinates also okay so that means uh, if any two disjoint clusters are there c1 and c2 with cluster feature 1 and cluster feature 2 simply if you want the cluster formed by merging if you want to do the merging for the cluster 1 and the cluster 2 means we can measure the cluster features also like uh, cf1 plus cf2 which will gives you the cluster feature so that is n1 plus n2 n1 plus n2 i have to add and ls2 plus ls2 ls1 plus ls2 and then ss1 plus ss2 which will gives you the cluster feature simply we can add those and we can measure the two clusters here and uh, this is the another example which they have given this is the cluster 1 and the cluster 2 where uh, i have to calculate the cluster feature 1 and i have to calculate the cluster feature 2 also so where i can get the c3 value by matching these two features that is the cf1 and the cf2 so these two examples they have given for a uh, how to calculate the cluster features next uh, uh, we will see with one example how to do the clustering for these uh, given data points see here uh, they have given a uh, few data points like uh, x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 x9 and x10 that means they have given total 10 points are there and they have given the t value like uh, 1.5 and branching uh, value b value as the 2 here so both they have given now i have to do the clustering with the help of the bridge algorithm here so here as this is my initial data point first i will consider the 3 comma 4 as my initial data point here so as that is the initial point my radius value will be 0 and my cluster feature 1 will be n comma ls comma ss here so here uh, n is equal to 1 where there is uh, now one data point under the consideration and ls is equal to some of the data points under consideration and ss is equal to sum of the uh, data points under the consideration so here uh, now see this is my cluster feature 1 comma 3 comma 4 comma 9 comma 16 so if you take uh, i am going to insert this 3 comma 4 in the leaf node why because uh, as the this is the initial point i am going to place it in this cluster next uh, we will see what about the x2 point x2 point means this is the second data point here now i have to find out whether this point i can insert it in this uh, leaf node or else i can go for the insertion in the another leaf nodes here so let us check here first for these uh, second point 2 comma 6 i am going to consider ls value here uh, how my ls value i am going to get i have to add this 3 comma 4 comma 2 comma 6 then i will get my ls value and if you want to get the ss value means again consider the square root of the x coordinates and the uh, squaring of the y coordinates which will gives you the squaring of the sum of the values now i have to calculate the radius here so uh, what is the uh, calculating for the radius equation means that is the square of 
S S minus L S square by n by n. So with the help of these S S and the L S values only, I am going to calculate the radius. So if I have calculated the radius, my value is zero point five comma one, which is less than the threshold value. As I got the radius value, which is less than the threshold value, I can place this uh, x two point in the same cluster. X two point in the same cluster. So now let us check about the third point that is the x3 is equal to 4 comma 5. So if you consider x3 is equal to 4 comma 5, again I have to calculate the linear sum and again I have to calculate the sum of squared points. And uh, what is the radius here? Here the radius which I got is 0.47 comma 0.47, which is less than the threshold value. So I am going to place this third point also in the same cluster. So what is the cluster feature? Cluster feature will becomes this one. Like a one comma nine comma fifteen comma twenty nine comma seventy seven. Next, to go for the fourth point that is four comma seven. Also, I have to check what is the radius value of the four comma seven. I got zero point four one comma zero point five five. So, as these points are also less than one point five, I am going to place this fourth point also in the same cluster. But your cluster feature will be changed here. So now let us check about the fifth point. So if you consider this particular fifth point here again, I have calculated the linear sum, uh, square sum of points, and then radius. So if you calculate the radius here again, it is also less than one point five only. So I have placed this uh, x five point in the same cluster again. Now we will check for the x six value. What is this x six value here? So x six value on the cluster feature one here. So here, if you consider the threshold value, I got the 1.97 as my radius value, which is greater than 1.5 value. So I am going to split the next x6 point into the another leaf node here. So that's how the splitting will be done completely based upon the threshold values and the maximum branching factor values. Next, we will check the point the x7 value. If you consider the x7 point values. Again, we are having the two branches will be there. That is the CF one and the CF two. Why? Because CF one will be completely related to this leaf node, and the CF two cluster feature two it is related to this leaf node here. I have to find out to which branch X seven point is nearer here. Then that leaf that leaf radius will be evaluated. So for that given points, I have to check out to which leaf node it is nearer. That is the cluster feature one or the cluster feature two. So I am having the with the cluster feature one L S by N values are there, where I got X eight comma six as my data points. Huh? And for the cluster feature two is equal to six comma two, uh, where N is equal to one as the data points here. So as X seven point it is closer to the six comma two than X. Eight comma six. So x seven will calculate the radius. Now we will calculate the radius also. If you calculate the radius again, now it is zero point five, which is less than the threshold value only. So I can easily place in this. That means in the same cluster, I can place this x seven point. Now in the same way, we have to do it for the x eight also. X eight, I have to check whether to which cluster feature it is nearer or whether it is far here. So based upon these cluster features, uh, as uh, x8 is also closer to the 6.5 comma 2 than 8 comma 6, so hence uh, x8 will calculate the radius with the CF2. So after calculating the radius with the CF2, how much values we got? Uh, that is the 0.47 comma 0.94. So that means it is it is less than 1.5. So I am going to place my x8 point in the second leaf node only. Next, we will see what about the x9 point. If you consider the x9 point again, there are two branches, CF1 and CF2. Are there again? I am going to check uh, to which leaf node it is uh, closer, whether it is the CF1 or the CF2 here. And x9 is closer to the 6.6 comma 2 comma 6. That means uh, for the CF2 cluster, it it is only nearer here. So what I will do again? I will calculate the radius here. After calculating the radius again. Uh, at that point of time, also it is very less than 1.5, so I am going to place it in the second leaf node only. So if you consider the tenth point here again, the tenth point we have calculated the radius that is 1.57 comma 1.70, which is false here. 1.7 means which is greater than 1.5. So again, I have taken the splitting of this particular data point into the another leaf node. So once if you are going to split here, see that 
your maximum number of children for a particular root node it should be two always suppose if you take this is the root node here i am having only two children here so if you take this particular root node here i am having only two children this is one leaf node and this is the another leaf node again for this leaf roof node i am having only uh, one children will be there that means one more children also we can add based upon the threshold values so that's how your uh, which algorithm will works here and uh, what are the advantages of this algorithm that means what is the time complexity means it will take big go of n where n will gives you the total number of objects then uh, bitch algorithm also it will not work for the spherical shaped clusters and the numerical clusters numerical attributes also so that's all for today guys thank you thank you for watching